Thanks for joining today's session. Uh, I'm Imran. Um, today we will be looking at what's new in Hyperworks for 2025.0 uh, for browsers. Uh, before looking at those um, new additions, I just wanted to quick uh, uh, recap uh, the common entity editor that we uh, added in uh, recent releases uh, because we felt that not everyone is still aware of it. Uh, so I'll just do a quick recap of this. So we did uh, introduce a common entity editor. Uh, we call it common because it's going to kind of uh, cater to both the selections that you do in the browsers and in the graphics. Uh, so you pick any entity from the idle selector, uh, you will have the data of that particular entity in the entity editor um, for uh, review uh, and editing. So any entity that you can pick from the um, idle, you can just select that and entity editor will give you that data for that entity without having to go into the browsers. So not only reviewing, like I said, you can even edit the entities um, data and reference entity data as well. And uh, similarly, you pick any entity in the browser, it's going to react to that selections as well. Then, of course, you can undock the entity editor to float on the screen, or you can dock it in the right to have more uh, space or area to look at uh, the data. And uh, even after you close the browsers, um, you can still continue to pick entities uh, in the graphics, and uh, you can basically have the data available right in the screen to uh, review and edit there. So the idea here is that you don't have to kind of go into specific browsers if your goal was really to review uh, or edit a single entity. And only when you need uh, to do uh, that operation at uh, multi-entity level, you go inside the uh, browsers and then uh, use the attribute columns with advanced filtering. That should be quick. So here I wanted to add quickly one point that I still see um, a lot of people running into uh, some confusions with. So especially in earlier um, versions, uh, the double click on uh, an entity in the graphics would used to bring up a floating edit entity editor, wherein it used to allow you to edit and review the data. But now uh, with this addition of common entity editor, since it's live with the selection that you're going to do in the graphics, you can see that data is already available here for you to review and edit. So uh, that double click that you used to do in the earlier versions is now a single click. So, uh, so now the double click we have hooked up to bring up uh, the respective browser. So whatever the entity that you have set it here and then you double click respective browser will come up. If the entity editor was not up, which is going to be up by default, but if it was closed and then you double click, then you'll get the entity editor back. So basically now um, the double click is a single click to uh, see the data and uh, edit it. And double click basically takes you to the respective browsers. OK, with that, I will uh, move on to some of the features. So yeah, I just added some of the features here from 24.1 since I didn't get a chance to uh, present these before. So we'll quickly run through. Um, we have added an option to export the solver deck uh, from the card editor itself. Um, in the card editor, basically we allow uh, users to edit the attributes in a card format, how they, uh, they are written to solver deck. Um, so here, if a user wanted to kind of export this and, and uh, verify how it's written out uh, to the deck, they can do it from, from here. So basically, uh, they can quickly review. Uh, in, the, in the deck, obviously, uh, there are options, but, but in some interfaces, you don't see the labels. It's just the values. Um, so they can quickly verify. And uh, it also exports all the referenced entities like how uh, we would do from the browsers. So if I export a material, in this case, all the referenced curves uh, and other entities uh, that are referred to the material will also be exported. Then for uh, views, we now support uh, show high resolute on multi uh, selection. So in the view tool that you see in the lower toolbar, we were able to kind of hide and show um, a view uh, at a single level, not at uh, the multi-level. So this would be needed if, one, if you want to, for example, remain in a current orientation, but still hide some of the contents from uh, some other views. So, so those actions of show, hide, isolate on multi-entity selection should not be possible from the uh, view browsers. 
Okay, then on search and filtering, we added uh, the contains and not contains search for uh, numeric values. Earlier, this was present only for text. So now you can even uh, search and filter the IDs or any numeric uh, by containing or not containing. Just a quick recording here of the same from the search bar. I can pick ID contains five. It gives me the results and you can as well do that from the column filter as well. So in this case, ID not containing five will return everything that doesn't contain a five. Um, not only the integers, even for float values, uh, this is supported. So anything, any value that you're going to input and say contains or not contains, you're going to get uh, the filtered results with that value. Okay, similarly for starting and ending with for numeric values or not starting and not ending with uh, are supported for the numeric values. Um, earlier this was supported, but uh, with the use of the contains operator, which is tilde, which is not uh, very intuitive to the users. So now uh, with the equals operator, we support uh, the starting ending with for both uh, containing and not containing search. So here again, I can, I can now use the equals operator itself. I can say everything starting with uh, a value and uh, similarly, I can say everything that's ending with the value. And similarly, I can use the not contains operator and then give me uh, everything that's not starting or not ending with uh, a given value and those those will be very quick to find. This will be very handy depending on the use case that you are uh, looking at at that specific time. OK, one, one small thing here that we added here is um, now you can access the online help directly uh, from within the product. Uh, if your focus is um, on the browsers, we will take you directly to the browser page. And uh, if you need help on the search and filtering with the focus in the search bar of the browser, if you hit F1, we will open uh, the respect find and search uh, entities uh, uh, web page. OK, now moving on to 2025.0. Uh, we did change uh, or update the show in browser behavior a little bit in, in uh, this version. So basically what happens is if uh, you're going to pick uh, your selection is lesser than the limit, which is generally uh, 1000. Um, we now directly push that uh, selection to the browser uh, instead of uh, sending it to the selector uh, like in the earlier versions. And uh, obviously, if the selected limit or selection exceeds the limit, uh, then we are going to continue to post the selectors like like we used to do before. So basically, if I if my selection is below the default limit, that is the thousand today. And uh, if that's below that, and my selection is below that limit, uh, I just use the show in browser uh, in the graphics, and those entities will be directly populated uh, into the browser. But if my selection is above 1000, then show in browser is going to open the browser, is going to give the message, and then it's it'll carry over the selection to the selector. So now at this point, user can decide whether he wants to further refine the selection, make it below 1000, and then go from there, or they can uh, change the uh, threshold limit, um, which was my next point, which we now have added to the preferences. Uh, earlier it was present only in the browser configuration dialog, but now from the preferences itself, you can change this limit to uh, based on the requirement. So we have now added this uh, into the preference dialog itself. And um, next point is now the section cards can now be activated from the browser uh, directly. Earlier it was only show how to isolate and uh, you had to use the section cut tools every time go there activate it and then um, uh, apply or activate the section cards from there um, a lot of customers were requesting for this to be able to be done from the browser itself uh, so if i open this whatever you used to get from here uh, now you can do that from the browser itself directly apply those section cards so uh, directly from here and these are going to be in sync so basically if i had applied from here then uh, the icon in the browser is going to be in sync with that. The next, uh, the entity defaults option that allows uh, basically for uh, attributes to be marked as mandatory and uh, it allows for defining a default value for the selected attributes of an entity is uh, now supported for 
properties in ANSYS interface. Um, so basically you can uh, mark any attribute as a mandatory and then define a value here. And then also there's option to hide certain attributes that you're, that you're not going to use. Then from the next time you're going to create an entity, uh, that attribute will be marked as mandatory and it will be indicated with that uh, small red triangle. And then the default value that you defined here is going to be applied automatically. OK, then a small thing here again. Um, we have added a shortcut to the show. It was missing in the empty space. So if you wanted to see all the contents that uh, up that's present in the in the model browser, you can just use a shortcut A. Now it's it's kind of more consistent with the graphics and uh, it'll basically show the entire model. OK, um, at this point I wanted to highlight some of the uh, resolved issues that some of the important is issues that we have resolved in um, in these versions. So basically one was uh, with the entity default itself, uh, like we saw now it, it basically allowed you to define the, the default values, but it was not being retrieved in the new sessions. So once you apply and uh, reopen the session, um, those were not being retrieved though though the setting was present in, in the files, but it was not being retrieved. So that's now resolved. Um, those defaults should be applied uh, across sessions. Then if you had the collector entities, uh, like for example, what collectors um, deactivated um, via a configuration application, um, its respective collected entities like loads, elements, nodes, those were not uh, uh, being removed uh, uh, in the model browser. So now that's that's corrected. So model browser should now give you the uh, exact state uh, of the entities. Then there was a open there was a performance issue with opening the set browser. If you had compound sets, uh, this was specific to access interface. So that's that's also now been resolved. Then uh, we were getting incorrect card images uh, assigned to the load collectors uh, upon creation in the PAM cache interface. So that, that's also resolved. And in 25.0, uh, uh, we have resolved the nodal coordinates uh, values issue. So basically, if you when you move some of the nodes, uh, entity data used to give the correct values, but uh, they were not getting updated in the attribute columns. They now do. And uh, then deleting solids or connectors was not prompting uh, for uh, deleting the associated uh, entities like how you would get from the graphics. So now that's resolved. Then typing uh, letters uh, unintentionally in a ID field was changing the ID, was accepting and changing it to a random number. So now even that's that's resolved now. Then uh, our or basically reverse uh, keyboard shortcut for reverse was not working for view entity, and uh, even that's resolved now.